Hi, welcome back to the Law and Crime Network. As you know, I'm Linda Kenny Bodden. We have a very special segment coming up right now. We are going to discuss the fact that in 15 days, the state of Texas plans on executing one Ronnie Reed. There he is in your pictures right now. You see him. He says he's innocent. The Innocence Project says he's innocent. My guests will tell you that the forensic science and all the evidence, including a confession that someone else made to this homicide of a Stacey Stites, says Rodney Reed is innocent. So I'm very pleased to have here today to discuss it. Two guests I'd like to introduce first, who is out in the state of Washington, investigator, independent investigator, unrelated to the Innocence Project, Kevin Gannon. Kevin, how are you today, sir? Good morning, Linda. I'm fine. Thank you. And anything you can do to help Rodney Reed, I know, told us, I know you told us you would do. Uh, and also, his lawyer from the Innocence Project, Bryce Benjet. Bryce, we have worked together on this case. You and Kevin came to me on this case, and I looked at it, even though I'm not one of his lawyers, to say, I believe this man is innocent. Tell me, why is Rodney Reed innocent for the murder of Stacey Stites? Uh, Rodney Reed... Uh, did not commit this crime as a scientific fact. And as you and I talked about this, uh, this was a lead that Kevin found for us. He, he came to me and said, this doesn't add up. And when you look at the scientific evidence in this case, uh, Stacy Stites was not murdered as the state said, but it shows that she was murdered hours earlier when her fiance said that he was at home with her alone. And tell me the name of this fiance who said he was at home alone with her at the time that the scientific evidence points to the fact she was killed. So Jimmy Fennell was a local police officer engaged to Stacey Stites. He was the prime suspect throughout much of the investigation. And everything that we have found continues to point to that initial suspect as the person who is responsible for this murder. So walk me through, when was Stacey Stites found dead? Stacey Stites was found dead on the afternoon of April 23rd. Uh, Where? Her, in Bastrop County, Texas, uh, off to the side of, of an unpaved road. And we have, I believe, a scene picture of where her body was located alone, showing to our viewers right now. Tell me more. Yeah, and so the state theorized, and this was largely based on Fennell's testimony, that she left for work at 3 a.m. Uh, their argument was that Rodney Reed abducted her, sexually assaulted her, and left her body there before 5.23 a.m. when they found the truck that she was supposed to be traveling in. And I think we also have a picture. The truck was found in a parking lot. And there was something important about the truck. There was something, a partial belt found outside the truck. And we're looking at a picture of it right now. A belt was found and a paper was found. Why is that so very, very important? So Stacey Stites was strangled with a belt. And half of that belt was found by the side of the road. Half of that belt was found by the truck. And uh, that is a very unusual thing. This is a leather belt. It would not be broken in that way in the course of murdering somebody. But uh, certainly uh, the person who committed this crime must have separated that belt, left one by the road and one half by the truck, which is very, very unusual. And before I ask Kevin Gannon a question, let me ask you one question. Has that belt, the murder weapon, ever been tested for DNA? Has the Innocence Project sought DNA? And has the government declined to test it for DNA? I, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, because back in 1998, you could not get DNA from something like a belt. But today, the technology is there that our skin cells on our hands will come off on anything that we touch. And so today, we could test that belt and it has the capacity to identify the real killer. We've been asking for that in state and federal court, and the prosecutors who are trying to execute Rodney Reed have refused. And indeed, there's also evidence. evidence. Uh, Kevin Gannon, you got into this case five years ago as an independent investigator for the A&E Network. And you found that scientifically it was impossible for Stacey to be killed at the time the government said, correct? Correct. What did you, what did you find, sir? Well, if, <clears throat> excuse me, the first thing I, I saw was I was reading the autopsy report, and from what I saw from the autopsy report, it, it, it didn't line up. I mean, she had a lot of lividity face down. She was recovered. But lividity uh, is it, it, what happens, it, what, a color of death when people die, correct? Right. Lividity is the, uh, the blood flowing in the, into the dependent capillaries in the position, whatever the body was, should be recovered. So if it's face down, she should the blood is on her. A front part of her body, she should be recovered face down, but she's on her back. But the lividity 
takes a period of like six to eight hours, usually eight hours to fix. And she had her lividity was almost fixed on her face, her frontal part. So I knew she was somewhere for a period of at least six hours minimal before she was moved to uh, to the woods in Bastrop where the body was found recovered on her uh, back. And the only person with her by his own statement was her, her fiancé, Jimmy Fennell, right? Right. Well, because the level of decomposition, decomposition starts in the lower right quadrant. And it spread within 12 hours. Well, let me plus, let me get back. The, 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 at the time that she died, because of the scientific evidence, that she would have only had to been with Jimmy Fennell, which is where he placed himself by his own statements, correct? Correct. And indeed, sir, indeed, Kevin, can you tell me whether or not other people have now confessed or, or other people have come forward and said that Jimmy Fennell confessed to them the murder of Stacey Stites? Yes, they have, including a uh, Aryan Brotherhood member in, in, in prison uh, just recently, which they're... They're trying to uh, confirm that statement. And, and, and Mr. Gannon, Investigator Gannon, your interest is is trying to get the guilty person to come to justice, and you believe the guilty person is not Rodney Reed, right? 100%. It's not Rodney Reed. In fact, to be honest with you, what they should do is free Rodney and then uh, have a trial for Jimmy. I'll come down and testify all the evidence which proves that Jimmy Fennell was clearly the murderer. And indeed, also, not only did we have the issue of the DNA not to been tested that you've asked for, these statements that uh, he has made, he also, Jimmy Fennell, has pleaded guilty to uh, another type of crime. And uh, also, it was alleged that he committed a prior rape on another occasion, isn't it? Yeah, I've been working on this case for 18 years, and over the years, every single suspicion that we've had about Fennell has come to forth. Uh, you know, he had a history in documents showing uh, violence as a police officer even before the murder, and that has continued until his guilty plea. Uh, he served 10 years uh, in prison for a crime uh, that was sexual in nature and was violent. And we uh, certainly think that everything about this case points to Jimmy Fennell. And the scientific evidence makes it impossible for Rodney to have committed this crime. And you've been in this case. How many petitions have you filed to try to have the DNA tested, have Rodney Reed freed, and the courts have refused in Texas? Tell uh, me, sir. What we see in every single case where a man is exonerated by something, by evidence, it takes a petition after petition, appeal after appeal. It takes over a decade for people to be exonerated just with DNA evidence. And, and so these things take a lot of time, uh, but we do believe that uh, the governor's office and the courts will take this very seriously. And we are uh, presenting everything in court as fast as we can as the evidence develops. And indeed, you've also filed a petition. Some of the photographs that we pulled uh, for this segment on the Long Crime Network showed um, showing the belt and showing the fact that it had not been tested. You have filed a petition now for clemency. What is the difference between a petition for clemency and an appeal? So uh, an appeal is to the courts. And you have to have legal error or constitutional error that the courts can overturn a judgment. Uh, when you go to a governor or the executive, they are a safety valve where the courts break down, and they do sometimes. It's appropriate for the governors to step in. And here, where we have such strong evidence, this is not a question of who committed the crime. It is scientifically impossible for Rodney to have done this, and everything points to Jimmy Fennell. And certainly, we think any normal person who looks at this, uh, whether they are Kim Kardashian, Dr. Phil, uh, or the guy next door, uh, they're going to be appalled that anyone would think of executing a man based on this evidence. Well, one of the people who looked at this case, obviously, I'll disclose, is my husband, Dr. Bodner, testified for you uh, that it was scientifically impossible for uh, Stacey Stites to have uh, been killed at the time the government said she was killed. But let's go move on from that. If clemency is granted to Rodney Reed, will he be released or will he still be in prison? So I've spoken to Rodney about this, and he wants to be vindicated in the courts. And so he actually told us, I don't want a pardon. Uh, I just want to get the death penalty off the table and so I can go to court and prove my innocence in front of a jury uh, so he can be finally vindicated of this crime. Now, there was also other evidence that the state experts at time of trial testified to that is, they've now retracted. Tell me how many state witnesses have retracted their, quote, scientific testimony and what it was. So the state's case was based on three experts who said that Rodney Reed's DNA collected from Ms. Stites' body 
was evidence of a contemporaneous sexual assault and murder. Uh, and that was their case open and shut. Every witness, all three of them, have recanted that testimony. Uh, their medical examiner, who testified he was the, the smoking gun witness for them, has recanted everything he had to say. Uh, the two DNA experts who said that this semen that they found was fresh have said, oh, well, it actually could be three days old. So all of that confirms what Rodney Reed has always been saying, and it implicates Jimmy Fennell with the time of death evidence, uh, and it puts the time of death when Jimmy Fennell said he was at home in the apartment. And so all of the state's witnesses who implicated Rodney Reed have now retracted that, and in replacement is solid scientific evidence placing the murder at a time she was with Fennell. And, and Investigator Gannon, just answer me this, sir, because you know this case inside out from an investigative point of view. Any other suspect between Jimmy, besides Jimmy Fennell that has come to the forefront in these many years? No, no one. I mean, he put himself at the scene, so, I mean, he, he's, the, he's the only suspect. So, anyhow, I want to thank Investigator Gannon. I want to thank Bryce Benjet for coming forward. If you want to help anyone of our viewers wants to help Rodney Reed, where can they go? Uh, you can get information on how to contact the folks who have decision-making power at uh, our website, innocenceproject.org. Thank you very much, Bryce Benjet. Thank you, Investigator Gannon, and good luck. And let the person who did this crime be convicted and the person who's innocent be freed. I'm Linda Kenny Bodden. Stay tuned.